Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. those news people cbs radio for the midwest news radio 78 wbbm chicago the cbs radio mystery theater presents Marshall. Woman, said the German philosopher, was God's second mistake. And therefore, the implication should be clear. If the good Lord himself could be mistaken about women, what chance have we mere mortal men? But it was the Irish poet who said it more gracefully. My only books were woman's looks and follies all they taught me. For the next hour, our subject is woman and equal parts, folly and wisdom. Rachel, Rachel, wake up, Rachel. What? Oh, oh I, I must have been asleep. Rachel. Whose voice is that? Rachel. Have you forgotten me already? Isaac! Yes. But they killed you. I saw them kill you. I've come back to you. Then, then it's a mistake. You didn't die. No, it wasn't a mistake. I died. I did die. <laughs> mystery drama, Queen of the Deadly Night, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Marion Seldes. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and True Value Hardware Stores. I'll be back shortly with Act One. You know, some cars that are economical aren't terribly exciting. This certainly isn't terribly exciting. Well, you can't have everything. And some cars that are fun aren't very economical. It certainly isn't very economical. Well, you can't have everything. Ah, uh, but the Opel Isuzu is different. It has things like a hefty overhead cam engine, rack and pinion steering, reclining bucket seats, and a short-throw four-speed transmission. Gee, a short-throw sounds like fun. It certainly does. Want to try it? Certainly do. Good one. Now I'll throw you. And besides all that fun, the Opel Isuzu also gives you mileage you wouldn't believe. According to the EPA, with standard four-cylinder engine and four speed transmission, the Opel Isuzu gets an estimated 23 miles per gallon in the city and a big fat 36 on the highway, bearing in mind, of course, the fact that your mileage may vary. Bob, we just passed another gas station. Yeah, and wasn't it fun? The exciting, economical Opel Isuzu at your Buick Opel dealers. Did you know that Carmel Wines of Israel rank among the few most famous wines of the world? That's true, and exquisite Carmel Wines owe their heritage to the French vineyards of Baron de Rothschild. Now, these vines were brought to Israel in 1882 to mature in the golden sunlight and the rich soil. Carmel wines are truly the ultimate, all from select grapes nurtured to absolute perfection. And the result is a world-famous, moderately-priced wine that continues to win international awards year after year. Try Carmel's Adome Atik Burgundy and the dry red Avdot table wine with steaks, roasts, or cheese. Serve Chenin Blanc, a clear, dry white wine to enhance fish or fowl. Carmel's outstanding Cabernet Sauvignon exemplifies the better red Bordeaux of France. And there are 24 other varieties, including vermouth and champagne. Many gold medal winners. 
You'll find Carmel Wines at your favorite store. If you don't, be sure to ask for Carmel Wines. Carmel has something for everyone. Imported by Carmel Wines, New York. The year is 900. We are deep in the Dark Ages. It has been 500 years since the civilization of the Roman Empire has been blotted out. It will be 500 more till the world will awaken to the light of the Renaissance. The year 900. A bad time to be weak or poor or a woman, especially a woman. And our tale concerns a woman. Her name was Rachel. She lived in Clairvaux, a tiny village near Paris, which wasn't much bigger than a village itself in those days. She was, of all things, a writer. She compiled stories and legends of those faraway, long-ago medieval times. And like all good writers, she made herself the central character of all of them. I am Rachel, daughter of Asha ben of Clairvaux, in the land of the Franks. I have traveled the face of this earth, and I am a very old woman now, and I have come back here to be buried with my ancestors. I have been a slave, and I have been a queen, and I have found good points in each. I've been away for many years, No one even remembers why I left. I'm not even sure they know who I am. But the rabbi and his wife shelter me out of the goodness of their hearts. Poor folk, they have little enough as it is. And yet, it could have been so different. So different. I write this chronicle to show how different the world could have been. And so... I shall go back many years to when I was a young girl in my father's house here in Clairvaux. Uh, Rachel? Yes, Father? Isaac is here. Isaac here? No. But doesn't he know it's bad luck to see one's bride before the ceremony on the wedding day? Uh, You'd better talk with him, my dear. Something's wrong. Well... What is it? Nothing, I hope. That is, I I hope it's nothing more than the natural feeling of apprehension that so many young men feel on their wedding day. Father, something's the matter. I just thought I'd come in here to prepare you for... Well, you'll just have to be patient with him. Isaac, please come in here. Now remember, child, he needs understanding. Isaac? Hello, Rachel. I know that you both will excuse me. What is it, Isaac? I... I don't think we should get married. Oh, are you... Are you trying to say you don't... Love me? No. I love you. Well, then... Rachel, have we the right to marry? To bring children into the world? Well, this world? Isaac, this is the only world there is. You know how difficult, how dangerous life is for us. Yes? If only we could fight back... We're too few. We're weak. I know. I know. It's only... Oh, Rachel. I was not born to be a scholar like my father, or a doctor like your father, or a craftsman. I I have no skill with copper or silver or gold. I, I was meant to be a, a soldier. A soldier? Yes, I have skill with the sword and the bow. But you cannot be a soldier. The law... The law even forbids you to carry on. I know. You must submit to whatever the Lord has in store for you. Yes. But why did the Lord give me such an appetite for fighting and no way to satisfy it? Well, suppose... Suppose you were permitted to become a soldier. You speak of how uncertain life is now. Imagine how almost everybody in the army dies in the war. At least you die fighting. Well, is that so important? Yes. It is, to me. Well, I still want us to be married, Isaac. 
Then, Rachel, we shall be married tonight. I still want us to be married, Isaac. With those words, I condemned him to death. I pronounced as a sentence of doom on my beloved. And I changed the course of my entire life. Had I not insisted on marriage, I might never have left the village of Clairvaux. There's no point in thinking about that. After Isaac had left, my father came back into the room. And uh, what have you decided, my child? We will be married. But, Father, is it the wise course? It is the only course. Our mission is to survive. Father, I'm afraid. Afraid for Isaac. He has a quick temper. It's true. He refuses to be humble. And it's because he has too much strength. Oh, no, child. He hasn't strength enough. Anyone can strike out in anger. Oh, Father, if only... Yes? I was about to say something silly. I... I was going to say... If only there was a land where our people could walk tall and straight. No one walks tall and straight anywhere, except for a few nobles. Father, who are the Khazars? Why? Well, I read of them in one of your books. It is a kingdom, a Jewish kingdom. Where? No one can be sure. Some say Persia, some say Turkey. A kingdom. A realm. Well, perhaps it's only a fable. But think how wonderful it would be, Father. Rachel, in the first place, there is no way of getting there. In the second, it probably doesn't even exist. And now you must help your mother prepare food for the wedding feast. Oh, yes. The wedding feast. I don't like to think about it, but if I'm going to tell my story, I must tell everything. All of us, everyone in our tiny community had gathered in the courtyard of my father's house. Torches made the scene as bright as day. And Isaac and I were married under the stars. And there was much happiness and laughter and drinking of wine. When suddenly there was a thunder of approaching hooves. And the lord of the castle, Count Ranulf himself, at the head of the troop of his horsemen, came upon the scene. Quiet. So quiet, it could have been the stillness of death. Finally, my father stepped forward. Greetings to your highness, Count Ranolf. I see you heathen dogs are feasting. What is the occasion? Ah, a wedding. Why was I not informed? Well, your highness... No, this will not do. It will not do at all. And the bride, I see the bride... A rather good-looking girl at that. Uh, Your Highness, members of our community are permitted to marry if we secure the authorization of the bishop. Father the bishop. But we have not violated any of the restrictions that are placed upon our... To think I almost missed this. A cup of wine, dog? Oh, yes, yes, Your Highness. And I was wondering how I should spend the evening. (laughs) I shall have a most enjoyable night. Rodwig... A horse for the bride. Your Highness, what, what, what? Where are we? Where? To the castle, of course, where you shall spend the most pleasurable wedding night with me. No! No! no. You mean you refuse the honor? No, please, Your Highness, we have rights granted by the king. Swine! How dare you? Are you unaware of the droit de seigneur? I have the right to spend the wedding night with every commoner girl who marries in my domain. Ludwig, put her on a horse. No, never. Only your youth prevents my mace from splitting your skull. Would you talk to me this way if I had a sword in my hand? Coward! And if you had a sword in your hand, dog, what would you do with it? I would spill your heart's blood. Oh, (laughs) I like this one. Rodwig, he belongs to me. To me and no one else. Give him your sword. No, please, don't. Don't. Your Highness, I will go with you. You shall go with me in any event. Well, now, Isaac, is that how they call you? You have your sword? Shall we fight? 
To the death. Oh, to the death! Before I knew what was happening, the fight was on. At first, I thought Isaac would be cut to pieces immediately. But somehow, he had learned swordplay, and he was holding his own. And then, a miracle. He was beginning to press the count. And on Count Reynolds' face, I could see fear as Isaac was slowly but surely overcoming his defenses. I knew that this cruel and arrogant man would never let Isaac get the better of him, even if he had to call for help. To the death, Count Reynolds! To the death! Hoodwink! Carolus, kill him! Kill the dog! And the Count's retainer fell upon Isaac. It was a terrible sight to see. I remember I fainted. I didn't know anything until I regained consciousness. I was lying on a couch in a large room. There were tapestries on the wall. And I knew I was in the castle. I see you are awake at last. Who? Oh. Please, I... Oh, but... What's to be frightened about? You'll be all right. Who are you? Hedwig, I, I'm supposed to prepare you for your lordship's bedchamber. No! Nothing <laughs> will probably happen. What are you saying? Well, you know the state he was in. Furious. Your young man would have killed him in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Isaac. Isaac is dead. The Count had to call for help. At that, it needed five of his men-at-arms to do it. Oh, I... I must go to him. Go to him. He's dead, isn't he? <clears throat> now I have to take you inside to my lord and master's bedchamber. No, no. You can't keep saying no. It isn't ladylike. Now listen. If I know Count Ranolf, he's so drunk by now he's going to be fast asleep, dead to the world. So you just go in there. No! Kill myself first. There's no need to kill yourself. Aren't you listening to what I'm saying? He's out cold. Now, tomorrow morning, before he wakes up, you walk out. And I'll see that the guards will let you through. But I... He won't remember that nothing happened. He won't remember a thing. But just keep your head. Now, come. Come in. You see? There he is. Crawled on his couch. Listen to him. There. Behold the great lover, dead to the world. He can sleep like this for days. You're going to have a very dull night. Where are you going? Don't leave me, please. I'll have to lock you in. But I'll open the door at dawn to let you out. Oh, don't go. Please don't go. A shame you didn't bring anything to knit. Oh, don't leave me alone. Don't leave me. The Droit de Seigneur, the right of the Lord of the Manor. This is how it was under feudalism. And so, here is our terrified Rachel, who only a few short hours ago was a single girl, and in rapid succession has become a wife and a widow. She's locked in the room of the Count Ranolf, whose intentions are perfectly clear, provided he sobers up. I'll be back shortly. During fall and winter, lights out time for the sun gets earlier and earlier. And that means lights on time is earlier for you. So True Value Hardware Stores offer bright ideas on fall and winter lighting from General Electric. Hi, Pat Summerall to tell you about them. The GE Watt Miser 35 Watt Cool White Fluorescent Lamp is just $1.83. And it's designed to reduce your electric bill. At a three cent per hour rate, the Watt Miser saves you about $4.20 a year. True Value Hardware Stores also offer GE Grow and Show plant lights. They can supplement the shorter periods of natural light your plants get at this time of the year. Prices start at just $2.40. Or get GE Soft White Plus bulbs with the exclusive power coil filament that's stronger than regular filaments. They last twice as long as standard soft whites, so you don't need to replace them as often. Get these and other bright ideas from GE at participating True Value Hardware Stores. True Value, that's more than just a name. It's their way of doing business. Fly to a beautiful day. Orland Square. Something beautiful to share. Discover shopping as it was meant to be in an indoor world of flowers and trees. Orland Square. Something beautiful to share. 
shop at Marshall Field and Company, Sears, and dozens more. Then stop for a snack in our relaxing Garden View Oasis. Orland Square, something beautiful to share. Where good values brighten your day. Don't miss seeing the hand-carved White House in miniature on exhibit tomorrow through Sunday at Orland Square. Every exquisite detail of the White House is shown in a 60-foot-long miniature mug. See authentic replicas of furnishings and decor. Lowell to find exciting fall fashions and everything you want and need at Sears, Marshall Field & Company, and many more of your favorite stores. Stop in at Orland Square. Orland Square, something beautiful to share. Route 45 in Orland Park. had a rapid series of events. We've been listening to the story of a medieval writer, a woman who lived in France in the 10th century. On her wedding night, the lord of the manor killed her bridegroom and took her to his castle, where she now awaits his pleasure. That was a pretty usual state of affairs during the 10th century, in most places. sleep. His face was arrogant, cruel, a face without mercy, a man incapable of kindness. I thought about what had happened within the space of just a few hours. Isaac, my bridegroom, dead at the hands of this devil in human form. And I, not just bereaved, but disgraced. And then suddenly, my fear vanished. In its place, I felt a cold resolve. I would kill myself. It was the only way out. I would kill myself. His dagger was lying on a bench near the bed. A dagger with a jeweled hilt. And silently, I removed it from its silver scabbard. Thin, sharp, deadly, gleaming steel. It would be the work of a moment to plunge it into my heart. Rachel. Rachel. My dearest Rachel, have you forgotten me so soon? Isaac. Yes. I said. My husband. Your husband. Your murdered, murdered husband. Isaac, it's you. And you. You're alive. No. I'm dead. And, and why do I hear you so clearly? No, no. You're alive. I hear you. Oh, why can't I see you? I'm dead, Rachel. Dead. Avenge me. Avenge you? Oh, Rachel. Be like Judas in the tent of Holofernes. Yes. I shall kill him. And then I shall kill myself. No, no. Fly from here. Where could I go? To the land of the Khazars. A people like us. But a warrior people. A warrior people. But our people haven't been warriors since the days of King David. The Khazars are warriors. It is said they have descended from the ten lost tribes. But what will I do there? You shall rule. Me? What do I know about... You shall be a queen. I'm, I'm dreaming. I'm, I'm having a nightmare. No. You are awake. Listen to me. Go. Go to the land of the Khazars. I don't even know where it is. To the east, somewhere. How can I find it? If it is the will of God, he will show you the way. Oh, oh such a journey. And the lands are filled with bandits and thieves. God will protect you. No, no, I, I'm frightened. Had I lived, you would have gone with me. Oh, Isaac, let me die. And I will come to you. What are you saying? To take one's own life is a terrible sin. But my life is of no use to me now. You have a destiny. You are to become queen of the Khazars. Me? Queen? Why not you? But I have no desire to... Find the land of the Khazars. And make it a place where all of our people may take refuge. Avenge me. It takes only a moment. And it is done. It's 
see just below the chest and to the left, slightly to the left. I will guide you, my beloved. I will guide you. Oh, no, not while he sleeps. Were he awake, you could never kill him. Oh, Isaac. You must help me. I shall help you. Hold the dagger tightly, tightly. And now, raise it high. And with all your strength, down! point bellowing after Isaac. He's dead and gone. Uh, oh, oh, uh, You've been lying on the floor all night. Is uh, this how you slept? On this cold stone floor? Oh, it was a dream. Isaac was a dream. Oh, get up. <laughs> on your feet, girl. Time you were leaving. Like I told you, nothing would happen, didn't I? Well, didn't I? Yeah, you told me. Hey, that's funny. I I never heard him like this before. Like what? Oh, how quiet. He usually snores like a drunken pig, which he is. But he's lying there, still as a, a corpse. Maybe he's sick. I better... No, I better not do anything. He hates to have people wake him. He might even plunge a knife into me. Come. Where are you taking me? I told you last night you can go home. Home? But I'm in disgrace. What kind of disgrace? You're not the only one. Besides, you're a woman. I killed him, Father. I killed quiet, him. Quiet, quiet. It would not be well for this to be known. I heard Isaac's voice. You must hide in my brother's house in Marseille. But I promised Isaac that I would search for the kingdom of the Khazar. There is no such place. It's only a fable. There are no such people. But, Father... You must obey me. You will go to the house of my brother Benjamin in Marseille. Marseille. A city of Greek sailors in the country of the Franks. I would go, for Marseille was on the sea. And there I could take a ship and search for the land of the Khazars. The journey to Marseille, as all journeys are, was long and difficult and perilous. But I wore the clothes of a young man, a poor young man at that. I was so small and so slight, so humble and unimportant looking that nobody noticed me. After some weeks, I arrived at the home of my uncle Benjamin. Well, my child, your fame has preceded you. Fame? You killed the mighty Count Renault. Then... It wasn't a dream. Oh, no, indeed. You must keep hidden, of course, till this all blows over. But I'll bring danger to your house, Uncle Benjamin. We have so much now. A little more won't matter. You must keep wearing that boy's costume. It's a good disguise. And it's best all round for you to be mistaken for a young man. Uncle Benjamin, I know how hard the times are. I don't want to be another mouth for you to feed. Oh, there's enough and to spare. I am very much in demand here. We are really quite comfortable. In what do you trade, Uncle Benjamin? Maps, charts. Maps? Of what? My dear, this is a city of sailors. They come, they go. Their ships move in and out of the harbor like flights of wandering swallows. They need maps to show them the waterways. Where is the land of the Khazars? And why would you want to know that? Because it's my destiny to go there. Your destiny? To become queen of the Khazars. And how was this 
destiny revealed. My dead husband appeared to me and spoke to me and said I was to become queen of the Khazar. My father, of course, dismisses it as a fable. <laughs> but you are an honorable child. If you say a thing, why should any deny it? Tell me, where is the land of the Khazars? I, I don't know, but I will ask. Who? The sailors who come into my shop. Surely one of them will have heard of it. Meanwhile, you have work to do. Work? Yes, work. If you are to be queen, you must prepare yourself. How? You are just a girl from the country. You must acquire wisdom so that you will be a good ruler. But how may I acquire wisdom? By reading books. We have many books in this house. Oh, Uncle Benjamin, I simply can't stay here and, and just read. And while you are reading... I shall be making inquiries. I became lost in my book. The more I learned, the more I discovered how little I knew and how much I must study. A year went by, two years, perhaps even three or four, I can't remember. As I say, I was lost in the book. And then one day, while sitting quietly and reading, I heard my uncle's voice. Child! Child! Come out here! Yes, uncle? Sit. Sit. Olaf, this is my uh, uh, nephew, uh, a child. Uh, this is Olaf, the Viking. You uh, wish to know about the land of the Khazars? Yes. A wild and dangerous country. A fierce and warlike people. And how could I get there? If you would look at the map... There is this place that lies between the lands of the Persians and the Turks. Wild country. This, they say, is the land of the Khazars. But why should anyone want to go there? Why? Uh, I've taken a vow. Oh. Well, then I can only wish you good fortune. Benjamin, I shall leave this map for your nephew. Oh, yeah. And you may put it down on my account. <laughs> uh, a pity, young man, a great pity. Why do you say that? Oh, well, they're a strange people, and yet they are suspicious of strangers. It would be better if you were a woman. Why? Uh, why would it be better? As I have said, they do not welcome strangers, but they do have great respect for women. Oh? Especially for women who have wisdom. Why? Women. Yes, yes, because only women have time to acquire wisdom. The men are too busy fighting or trading. And so when a king or any man, for that matter, wants to take a wife, he does not look for beauty, as we do, but for wisdom. There you go. Destiny. Destiny. It seems to be leading the way to its own fulfillment. So far, everything our Rachel has done has taken her a step further along the road. But the perilous journey is still ahead. What shall await her once she arrives there? Well, I shall arrive with the third act in just a few moments. Ever since Budweiser was first brewed back in 1876... The Budweiser people have talked with pride about the careful way they brew the king of beers and that great Budweiser taste. Here's how we were saying it ten years ago. No matter how you say it or sing it, it all adds up to a taste, smoothness, and drinkability that's made Budweiser the king of beers for a hundred years. Anheuser-Busch, headquarters, St. Louis, Missouri. This is WBBM Chicago. Carson Peary Scott & Company announces their biggest vacuum cleaner sale ever. 
And you've got three days to make a clean sweep in their floor care department. All vacuums in stock are now on sale at incredible savings. Like the Hoover Dialomatic Power Drive, specially priced at $149.88. Or the Hoover Celebrity Canister, just $69.88. Or the Hoover Upright Convertible, Carson's price, at just $64.88, including attachment. You will find Hoover Canisters, Uprights, Power Drives, all on sale now at Carson's. And you will find savings from $10 to $30 on every Hoover in the house. That's right, savings of $10 to $30 on every Hoover in Carson's stock. So hurry and insist on Hoover at Carson's. If you don't, you're going to be left behind in the dust. Carson's biggest vacuum cleaner sale ever. Sale ends September 26th. State Street and Suburban Stores. being told by a medieval writer, Rachel of Clairvaux. It is by now an old legend about this fabulous woman who was born at least a thousand years before her time. It is the story of an incredible journey, and the boat is about to sail. For the first time, I believed it. I believed I did have a destiny. I was meant to go to the land of the Khazars and to become queen, to make that land a haven for my people, my oppressed people. Oh, last the Viking left the map with my uncle, and then the two of us put our heads together. How was I to get there? But the map shows us exactly where the place is, uncle. Yes, I see. But the journey... The journey? The sea is full of pirates. You shall be captured and sold as a slave. If it is the will of the Lord, I fulfill my destiny. Then I shall arrive safely. I will find you a ship. And he did. The captain was an old friend, and Uncle Benjamin persuaded him to take me on as a cabin boy. For although it would be best to be a woman when I arrived at my destination, it would be better if I were a boy before I arrived there. My ship sailed. She was bound for the Greek city of Constantinople, and those waters were thick with pirates, pirates from every known nationality. But somehow, we seemed to have a charmed life. We outsailed most of the pirates who pursued us. And finally, after many weeks, we arrived at our destination. Then I took the trail overland, for I had many miles to travel. And yet... Though it was the wildest of all countries, I had no fear. I knew it was the Lord's will for me to come to my destiny. One morning, I was weary, I was hungry. I passed by a field where some men were tending their sheep. I could hear their voices and the words they spoke had a familiar sound. It was Hebrew, the Hebrew of the Old Testament. I was here. I had arrived at the land of the Khazar. And soon, I was in a town, and there was a splendid house, and I knocked at the door because I needed food and shelter, and a place where I could dress to become a woman again. Yes? I ask hospitality. Oh, enter, young man. Thank you. From where do you come? A far country, the land of the Franks. Oh, I've never heard of it. How does it happen you speak our language? Oh, I am one of you. My name is Bathsheba, young man. What are you called? Rachel. Rachel? But that's a woman's name. I am a woman. Where may I bathe and dress? Oh, I, I never would have believed it. Why have you come here? Bathsheba, I look into your eyes and I see you are a good person. Oh, well, I... I try to be. And I need a friend. Will you be my friend? Yes. I need someone to talk to. It's been so long since I could pour my heart out to someone. Oh, I understand. May I confide in you? Of course. I'm here to fulfill my destiny. Your destiny? I am to become queen of the Khazars. Oh, well, then you've arrived in a good time. Even now, the king is looking for a wife. It's true. <laughs> what Isaac told me is true. I am to be queen. 
queen. Now, the queen must be the wisest woman in the kingdom. Are you wise? Well, the Lord will give me whatever wisdom is necessary at the proper time. So the king has proclaimed that he will marry the woman who can answer three questions. Well, I'll know the answers when the time comes. What are the questions? No one has appeared, and so the king has not yet asked. Well, I shall go to the court at once. Oh, one moment. Why? Well, why should I delay? Uriel? Uriel? Come in here at once. Lock her in the cellar. Why? What are you doing? <laughs> Strong men seized me and carried me to a room deep under the ground. They locked the door and left me. And do you wish to know what was happening while I sat there trembling? Very well, I will tell you. Bathsheba, my false friend, presented herself before the king. Your Majesty, I have come to answer the three questions. And what is your name? I am Bathsheba, widow of Nathaniel. Very well, Bathsheba. You're good to look upon. And if you are wise, you shall become our queen. The first question. How far is it from the sun to the earth? Can you give a truthful answer? How far is it from the sun to the earth? Oh, your majesty, this is a difficult question. May I retire to make the proper calculations? You have our permission. How far is it from the sun to the earth? I won't tell you. Then you shall die here of hunger and thirst. Well? Just a little water. Just a few drops, please. Water, wine, cool, refreshing, all you want. Just answer the question. Give me the answer. Would you rather perish? The answer. Will you let me drink? Will you tell me the answer? Yes, yes. Is exactly as far from the sun to the earth as it is from the earth to the sun. Hmm. That must be accepted as a truth. It cannot be denied. Very well, Bathsheba. You are one-third the queen. Now for the second question. Listen. What is it that in the morning crawls about on four legs at noon, walks erect on two, and at dusk, creeps about on three. I don't know. You know. You know. I, I don't know. I tell you, I just don't know. Then stay here in this cellar. Starve. Die here in this cellar. My head was spinning. Had I come this far only to be defeated here by a false friend? Was I to lose everything? Was I to miss my destiny? I resisted telling her the answer for as long as I could. It was a simple question for one who had read books. It was actually the ancient Greek riddle of the Sphinx. But I decided to die rather than tell her. <laughs> but I was just too hungry, too thirsty. One morning I just... <laughs> at the sight of food I found myself talking and telling her. <laughs> What is it then that in the morning crawls about on four legs, at noon walks erect on two, and at dusk creeps about on three? The answer, O oh king, is man. Man? Yes, man. In the morning, or the beginning of life, as an infant, a man crawls about on all fours. At noon, which is the prime of life and the time of strength, he walks strongly and proudly on his own two feet. And at dusk, which is the twilight of life, weak, decrepit, unable to hold himself erect, he hobbles painfully with a staff. <laughs> you are two-thirds my queen. And now for the final question. Are you ready, Bathsheba? Yes, Your Majesty. Can you tell me what I am thinking? What are you thinking now? What am I thinking now? Oh, well, I... Is the yes. question so difficult for one of your great wisdom? Oh, yes. Yes, Your Majesty. I must retire to, to study the matter. You have our permission to retire. Once again she came to me to ask me the question. And this time I said, I don't care. 
Kill me, starve me, do as you like. I cannot tell you the answer. We shall see. My dearest Rachel. Oh. Ike. Is that you? Stop feeling sorry for yourself. I died fighting. Can you fight? How? How can I fight? All I can do is just starve to death. No. You can fight this woman. This evil woman. How? Tell me. How? Instead of weeping, why not open your heart and pray and ask for guidance? I have no more patience. Give the answer now, or I will have my servants kill you on the spot. Speak. How can I speak? How can I tell what the king is thinking? Unless, of course, I can watch his face and hear the tone in his voice as he asks the question. That's impossible. It could be done. How? Let me dress in your robes and cover my face with your veil. Then I could go to the palace and... Do you take me for a fool? Do you think I can be trapped so easily? Once I let you go, you would never come back. I promise I shall not try to escape. Why should I believe you? Because I am a religious woman. I cannot lie. I promise I shall not try to escape. <sighs> Very well. We shall exchange clothes. Go in my place. <laughs> Sheba, you are ready to answer the third and last question. Can you tell me what I am thinking? Of course. Your Majesty is thinking that I am Bathsheba, widow of Nathaniel, when in reality I am Rachel, daughter of Asher ben Zi, from the land of the Franks. What? It is true, Your Majesty. Remove your veil. Do any in this room know the woman Bathsheba? He's not Bathsheba. Silence, silence. And now, may I withdraw? Withdraw? Why? Because I promised Bathsheba I would return. You see, she has held me prisoner in her cellar and made me furnish the answers to your questions. But to answer the final one, I had to come here. And I have given her my word to return you were the one who really answered the other two questions? Yes, Your Majesty. Then you are the Queen. And so I became Queen of the Khazars, Queen of a fierce and warlike people. I had hoped to find here a haven for all the oppressed of Europe, but it was not to be. The kingdom of the Khazars disappeared one day in flames and death, as all kingdoms do. And I, the queen, became once again a homeless wanderer on the face of the earth. Don't say we never give you a happy ending. After all, we've told you about a lone, defenseless woman who lived during one of the most hazardous periods in history. And we've given her full share of happiness, adventure, love, some sorrow, true, but ripe, contented old age. Could you ask for more? I shall return shortly. Oh, full of B-Bill soda, even cream, or prescription? My hemorrhoids, Mr. Edwards, pain, itching. Well, most of my customers use this. Preparation H? Well, in many cases, Preparation H relieves occasional pain and itch for hours. Hey, that's great. And Preparation H actually helps shrink swelling of hemorrhoidal tissues caused by inflammation. I'll buy that. Doctor tested Preparation H comes in ointment or suppositories. Soothes pain and itch and actually helps shrink swelling of hemorrhoidal tissue. Now use only as directed. If your attic has less than six inches of insulation on the floor, you're being robbed every day without ever knowing it. To stop the under-insulation robber and possibly save up to 30% on the cost of fuel to heat and cool your home, inspect your attic. Then see your neighborhood CertainTeed building materials dealer or insulation contractor. CertainTeed fiberglass attic insulation will stop that robber once and for all. 
was born into poverty, but his ruthlessness and burning ambition were to lead him into a dazzling world of wealth and passion. He was Cosmas Berlotus, young hero of a bold new novel by Nicholas Gage, The Berlotus Fortune. This sweeping bestseller follows Cosmas from boardrooms to bedrooms as he forges a vast dynasty that stretches from sun-drenched Greek fishing villages to fast-moving capitals around the world. For stunning entertainment, read The Berlotus Fortune, a bantam book where paperbacks are sold. Good buddy, check the seat covers in that blue four-wheeler. <laughs> a lot of people are playing around with CBs for the first time, but these are not toys. At Regency, we make precision radio equipment, CB radios you can depend on, because you never know when you'll need one. Breaker, breaker, emergency. Regency, we're worth listening to. For CBs, monitor scanners, marine, business. confined, restricted, exploited. And now, in our time, the bonds are breaking. Now women are rising. And what it signifies, we cannot say. After all, those who live through a revolution don't know it's a revolution till it's all over. What are women going to do? It's a proper question for us to raise. After all... We are the Mystery Theater. Our cast included Marion Seldes, Arnold Moss, Bryna Rayburn, Bob Caliban, and Court Benson. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by CertainTeed Fiberglass Attic Insulation and Buick Motor Division. Mrs. E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our Mystery Theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.